So welcome back to the channel. As the title suggests, we are gonna go over five of the most common mistakes that grillers or beginner barbecuers actually make. And if you make any of these, this isn't a criticism. I made a lot of these when I was starting out. It's just part of the journey of becoming a better backyard barbecuer or griller. So without further ado, the first one is cooking to time and not temp. People always wanna know, oh, how long did you actually cook that steak for? How long did you cook this roast for? How long does this brisket go? You never cook to time, you cook to temp. Temp will tell you when your food is actually done. And the reason for that is there's just too many different variables over the course of a cook. It can be the type of protein you're cooking, the thickness of that protein, the ambient temperature outside, the humidity. There's just so many factors that leave time as a really unreliable way to assess whether your food's actually done. Now, every protein has a slightly different temperature in terms of its doneness level. And so chicken, you wanna finish at 165, medium rare steaks around 130, brisket you take to 198 to 203. And so just spend a little time researching before you actually start your cook, what the final temp should be and just use that as a means to guide your cook. Now to start here, I just recommend you get a really good instant read thermometer and a remote Bluetooth thermometer. And both of those tools will give you everything you need to monitor temps on virtually any cook you'll do, whether that's on a grill, a smoker, a rotisserie, charcoal grill, Kamado, it'll cover them all. The next most common mistake I see are people who don't properly manage their grill temperatures over the course of a cook. Now there's a time when you want your grill to be ripping hot if you're gonna be searing off a steak, but there are also times when you want your grill set up to go low and slow if you're smoking a brisket, for example. So getting used to how you actually manage the airflow on each of your grills or pits is really, really important to optimizing how you grill. So when you get the temps on your grill dialed in, you really need to remember the old adage that if you're looking, you're not cooking. If you open up that lid on your grill, you're gonna lose a bunch of valuable heat that's gonna push out and extend the time of your cook. You really just need to get your temp probes into your protein, maybe get a temp probe at great level, and just monitor the temps of your whole cook and trust the temperature more than anything else. So one thing is don't always rely on the actual temperature in the hood or the dome of the grill that you're using. We always run a temp check on every grill we use where we actually have a temp probe that's down at grate level just to see the temperature difference between the grate, which in some cases can be six inches to a whole foot away from where the actual built-in thermometer is in the grill that can result in some pretty significant dis differences. So you might think that you're actually rolling low and slow at 250, when in actuality, at the grate level, you could be higher to 300. And so understanding the temp right next to your protein is super important. Next are grillers who don't understand the difference between direct and indirect cooking. Now, if you're trying to sear off a steak, most likely you want direct cooking. So you want a ripping hot pile of coals. You want to be cooking right over top of those coals and that's gonna give you a beautiful sear. That's the way for the Maillard reaction to work. It gets all the amino acids and the sugar and the protein to caramelize, gives you that beautiful brown crust. But that's not how you wanna cook every protein. Let's say you've got a two inch porterhouse. Even with a steak like that size, if you just rip that over direct heat and you get that beautiful sear, the inside is actually gonna be completely raw by the time your crust is finished forming. So you need to learn how to cook indirect too. That's where you typically go lower in temperature, you set up some type of heat deflector or barrier, and your fire is on one side and your proteins on the other side of the grill, providing a bit of distance. And it's a bit more like cooking in a convection oven where you're not getting direct radiant heat, you're getting indirect heat that's just circulating hot air throughout your grill or your Kamado. And indirect cooking, that's perfect when you're doing large cuts like briskets, if you're doing a turkey, pork butts, virtually anything that if you just seared, it'd be fully complete on the outside, but raw in the middle, that's a perfect situation for you to consider doing indirect, at least on a portion of your cook. 
Next, I see a lot of people who complain that charcoal grilling just adds a ton of time to the overall cooking process. And frankly, I think there's a pretty easy way to fix that. The normal way that I prepare if I'm gonna be cooking on a gas grill is I prep all my food, then I go out, ignite the grill, and get the food on. And because you've got that immediate heat of a natural gas grill, that's fine. But that's not the way to actually grill if you're using charcoal. So for charcoal grills, I'd recommend that you actually invert that process. Get your charcoal chimney loaded up and, and ignited, and while that's actually lighting up and getting all the coals ripping hot, you wanna be inside preparing your food at that point so that when you're ready with your food, you can come back out to the grill, your charcoal chimney will be ready to dump into your pit, and it really didn't add that much time to your overall cook, but you get that beautiful charcoal flavor profile that's just way better than cooking on a natural gas grill. And then lastly, I see a lot of pit masters with a ton of smoke coming off of their pits and it's just billowing out white smoke going everywhere and they think that that's actually the best way to impart a smoke flavor into your protein. But in actuality, that white smoke is a sign that the wood isn't fully combusting down with your charcoal and as a consequence, you're getting this really dark white smoke that is imparting a bitter flavor onto your food. And that's because it's not fully combusting and there's creosote that's left in that smoke. And that's the flavor. If you've ever tasted bitter, smoky barbecue, it's because they haven't allowed their white smoke to turn over into clear blue smoke. So white smoke is typically what's coming out when you first light your charcoal and put a wood chunk down on there. So what you wanna do is just let that charcoal really warm up, give it some time, and you'll slowly see that the smoke converts to a clearer smoke or a blue smoke, which is what you're looking for. And that blue smoke is really the ideal thing. That's the holy grail of what you're looking for. You'll still get beautiful smoke rings. You'll impart more smoky flavor than you can really handle. And you don't have to worry about that bitter flavor profile in any of your food. And the other thing related to this, another problem of getting rid of that white smoke could be that you've just put too much wood chunk onto the actual charcoal. So personally, I'd recommend not putting on more than one or two wood chunks because it can really lead to just too much smoke and the charcoal won't be able to fully combust it. So there you have it folks. Those are the five most common mistakes that I see with beginner grillers or pit masters. I'd love to hear down in the comments below if you've got any other suggestions that really helped you improve your game over time. We're trying to create a positive and helpful community here where everybody can learn from one another. So I'd love to get your input on items that you didn't know about when you first started out, but that you found really improved your game over time. So if you like this video, consider giving it a like below. Consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this to come. And we'll see you on the next one.